Hello, I'm Tom Hollingsworth, and welcome to Networking Field Day. We are here, the offices of Ixia, with a group of invited writers, speakers, podcasters, and other luminaries in the networking community. They are here to ask questions, make comments, and enhance the discussion about Ixia's solutions and products. If you would like to learn more about Tech Field Day, including how to become one of these delegates or a presenter, please visit our website at techfieldday.com. If you would like to see more videos like this involving great technical content, please check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash techfieldday. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our first uh, networking field day. I'm really thrilled to have you guys here. Uh, I'm Marie Hattar, and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Ixia. And, uh, and I really thought this was a wonderful opportunity for us to better connect to the bloggers, because as we all know, the industry is really changing. I'm not going to make any jokes about this being NFD 13 and it being Friday and all of that, because everybody will probably cover that. So I just want to take a few minutes to first uh, tell you a little bit about uh, Ixia. And, uh, and what we do. So we have been around almost 20 years and uh, we work in two key areas of business. Many of you guys probably know us for our heritage in creating test equipment. In fact, I would say almost, uh, almost all, if not most uh, service providers and network equipment manufacturers use us to test their products to make sure that they're up to snuff. Uh, in the last four years, we've moved into a new area of network visibility, and we also have an underlying platform of security. Uh, we are number one in the test arena. We're uh, number two visibility market leader, and uh, we really pride ourselves on, on being first to market with key innovations that we bring to the table. We're about 1,800 employees worldwide, and we have global offices all over the world. We're probably one of the most uh, distributed engineering organizations. We have engineering groups in Santa Clara, Austin, Calcutta, uh, China, you name it. We have uh, development teams all over and uh, North Carolina, Seattle, uh, so, and we make it work, which is really, really cool. And, uh, and so really excited to have you guys here and hope you get a lot out of this today. So one of the things we're gonna talk about and focus here uh, is really on our network visibility portfolio and what we do there and where we see it uh, going forward. Now one of the things, you know, a lot of us when we go home or live our lives, we have some basic assumptions. We all assume that when you turn on that water, fill your glass, that it's contaminant free. And by the same assumption, we typically also assume that sometimes the data that's flowing through our networks is actually getting to all of the tools that are inspecting them, that are monitoring them, that are securing us. Uh, and that they actually are seeing all of the data and being able to inspect it. The reality is we have so many data flows that are going all over. And the other piece of it is uh, we just don't know. Like, till you actually go and look at your data, make sure it's flowing in all the right areas, test it, ensure that that happens. You just don't know that your firewall is seeing everything. You think it is. Uh, you, th you assume everything is being distributed to the right places, but that's not always the case. And, um, and that's something that we pride ourselves at here at Ixia is really ensuring that data integrity as we do our mass data distribution of the data because we also verify it through very strong test tools. And that's really where we bring our heritage together in terms of our tools are the ones that do massive traffic generation. Uh, and, and then we can sort of see through our visibility tools, is everything getting to where it needs to go? Because ultimately, we really want to make sure that the data is contaminant free, that your firewall is seeing all of the data to ensure it's protected, that your intrusion detection system or your intrusion prevention system can actually, is not missing packets because a switch is overloaded or just decided to prioritize something else. Uh, so in many ways, uh, information technology really does depend on data visibility. And I know we and many other security vendors say, you know, you can't really have security without visibility. 
And the reality is, is today, this is a typical setup that you see in terms of a network. You know, you'll have your clients going through a whole network, and then you have your different uh, tools, whether it's your analytics tools, your network performance management, application performance management connected to the network. Now, how do you make sure all of those things are getting that contaminant-free data? It used to be uh, that uh, a lot of times in the old days, and I worked at Cisco for a long time, you know, you'd leverage span ports off your switches. The issue with span ports is if the switch is overloaded, it deprioritizes that replication of span ports and it just processes the data through. So now your tools are blind to anything that's going on. So at the time, a company called NetOptics came out with this idea of network taps. Now, we've since acquired NetOptics, so NetOptics is now Ixia. But essentially, what a network tap does is it goes in and takes a copy of the data and can redirect it to whatever tool you want. And it takes full data copies. It's not like a switch that eliminates your sort of your, your layer one, two type errors because it doesn't want to send that out. A tap takes everything and it sends it out. So then, what happened is that was really popular, but, uh, but that was a lot of data that was going all over the place. So then how do you make sure this data is groomed in the right way so that the tools are not overwhelmed, overloaded with tumultuous data? And that's really where we got into this whole concept of the creation of network visibility portfolios that includes things like network packet brokers, which in many ways are really, in my opinion, a very smart traffic, mass traffic distribution system. So a typical setup is you have all of the different things, all the different tools, your network operations, your applications operations, your security, your forensics. And in a typical setup, what you would do is you would put your taps all over the place. Because if you really want to see what's going on in your network, you want to collect multiple points of data. What typically happens with that is then, because your tools don't have infinite amounts of ports and they're expensive, you really want to groom this data. You want to bring it together. and that led to the rise of network packet brokers, uh, which are really smart, intelligent data distribution systems that do a few things. So what they do is they aggregate all of that data from all those packets, from all of those tabs, and then they filter it based on what the tool wants to see. There's no point in sending all kinds of traffic to an analytics tool. It really cares primarily more about things like NetFlow and some aggregation and metadata. Uh, beyond that, they can load balance across the different uh, capacity of what you have in your network. If you have a one gig firewall, no point overloading it with too much traffic. You just want to groom the traffic so that it can actually process that. And beyond that, what a network packet broker will typically do is, as you can see, you're, you're, you're tapping into all kinds of data. It'll deduplicate it. If the packet's exactly the same, there's no point in sending five different copies of that exact same packet. You just want your tools to see one. And so from there, what the network packet brokers do is then distribute this information to the respective tools, ensuring that there's no packet loss, there's no packet drops, and that the tools see all of the data that they need to. And Rajap will go into a lot more detail on this a little bit later. I'm just sort of framing the situation. One of the key things we do in terms of what we deliver with our network visibility portfolio is we've really woven in this concept of a security fabric underneath all of our visibility tools. And what a security fabric really does, you got all this data that's coming through. So we really take that data and we essentially make sure you can tap into it anywhere. So we give you that secure access with our tap portfolio that you can get in and see it from anywhere that you want. And you see that 100% of your data. It's not like partial data, there's no discrimination. You get a full copy of it. Then beyond that, what we ensure is that there is security resilience in your network. And we do that through our portfolio of products that we call bypass switches, which is, I'll, you know, in some ways I'll call that an active tap in some ways because it will make a determination whether if your tool fails, if it's an irrelevant tool, you can decide whether you want that to fail open or closed. Sometimes your decision is I want my network to be up. I don't care if I miss 
a, an intrusion prevention system. I definitely never want it to fail uh, closed if my firewall goes down, but certainly I may want it to reroute traffic if you know my analytics tools fails. It's not that critical to my network operations. So we give the operators that programmability through our bypass switches to ensure that they have resilient security and that if a firewall goes down or an IPS, we can reroute it to something else to make sure that those tools are always up. The other piece we do is this concept of context-aware data processing. And what that means is we know what types of applications are running on your network, and we can make decisions on that. We have one customer, for example, it was a university, that decided, you know, for us, if we know that the data is coming in from Netflix or from Facebook, we don't want it to go through our firewall. We trust, as long as it's coming from those servers, we, just want, we don't want to invest in even more firewalls in our network, so we just want you to bypass that because we believe that they're deploying securities. Now, a security person may say, yeah, that's kind of a little bit flawed, but as everybody knows, security is all about risk. It's about what's your risk profile. So we give them the flexibility to be able to understand what is the application, understand the geolocation it's coming from, and then redirect it to the right place. And then beyond that, we provide this unique capability of what we call security intelligence processing. And all of this is woven into our visibility portfolio. And what that does is it recognizes we have a very large, uh, what we call our Application and Threat Intelligence Research Center. And what they do is they are uh, keeping track and looking at all of the different threats that are going on. Because on our test side, we actually have a great product called Breaking Point, which is used to attack all kinds of uh, you know, security products to make sure they are robust. So what they do is they monitor where are all the attacks coming from. They create a holistic database of what are, where there are good IP addresses versus bad IP addresses. They know who's launching these attacks. And we weave that intelligence into our visibility portfolio to essentially be able to filter out or block traffic that we know is coming from known bad IP addresses because we want to reduce that attack surface on the network. More importantly than that, we also provide the capability to do SSL encryption decryption through our platform so we can actually see the data. As we all know, more and more of the traffic, I think it's like almost over 80% now of all web traffic is SSL encrypted and it's just gonna keep going up. That's good and bad because what it means is now malware and, uh, and bad stuff can essentially hide in there. So by being able to provide the tools, the visibility of what's going on in that traffic, we can better protect our networks. The other thing you'll hear about today is our holistic uh, vision for what we do with the move to cloud. Now, you know, there's always debates how much is going to be in public cloud, what's in private cloud. Pretty much most companies are doing a myriad of the two uh, because they see the economics for some of them in terms of going to public cloud. They can spin it up, spin it down. They like the agility. They like that orchestration. Others want the flexibility of what they can do with their private. But at the end of the day, when you talk to the IT personnel, the one thing they want is they want their full data visibility. They want to be able to, it's their data. They don't want to depend on someone else saying, yeah, yeah don't worry about it. We'll take care of it for you. So one of the things we provide with our platform that we call CloudLens <coughs> is that holistic visibility across your public, your private, as well as any combination of hybrid clouds. <coughs> 